So how can we be sure that our quantum annealers are actually using quantum physics to solve problems? Now this isn't a simple question to answer because we don't have direct access to measure the quantum physics in our system. The only information we get from the system is from the final states of the qubits. And these final states are all classical states, not quantum states. So we have to infer from the states that we get what's gone on during the anneal. And in this video, I'm going to describe the kinds of experiments that have been done and that we've published that show evidence for many different kind of quantum phenomena in our chips. But before I get into it, it's probably a good idea that you watch my last video, which dealt with looking at the Hamiltonian and the Eigen spectra. So one way of getting information about the state of the system at some point during the anneal is to anneal at the normal speed for a certain amount of time and then suddenly speed up the schedule to the end. And what this does is it freezes the dynamics of the qubits at the point at which you speed it up. So the probabilities you see at the end of the anneal of the qubits being in the zero or one state reflect the probabilities at that point at which you sped up the anneal. So in a paper in 2013, the researchers created a problem that had a very small minimum gap. So the distance between the ground state and the first excited state at one point in the anneal was very, very small. And then what they did is they used this technique to investigate the probabilities of the qubits being in the zero and one state at different points during the anneal. So what you'd expect to see is if you speed up the anneal before the gap, the system will jump into the higher energy state and you'll see this in the final statistics when you measure your qubits at the end. But if you speed up the anneal after the gap, you'll stay in the lower energy state. So by speeding up the anneal at different points in the anneal schedule, you can determine whether there is a minimum gap and also where it is in the anneal. So what these results clearly showed is that there is indeed a gap at the point predicted by the quantum models. And what this means is that the whole Hamiltonian and energy spectra view of these systems is correct. And these systems are running quantum annealing and not classical annealing. Another way to see the difference between quantum behavior and classical behavior in the qubits is from the freeze out time. So in annealing, what happens is at some point late in the anneal, the dynamics stop for each qubit. And so it's fixed into either the zero or the one state. And from that point onwards, the qubit can no longer flip. Now in a classical system, the qubit can flip from one state to the other via thermal hopping. Whereas in a quantum system, you also have quantum tunneling between the two states. So importantly, you can see the difference between thermal hopping between the states and quantum tunneling, because thermal hopping is dependent on temperature. The lower the temperature, the earlier on in the anneal, the dynamics between the wells will stop because the thermal energy of the qubits is smaller in comparison to the barrier. So quantum tunneling, on the other hand, is very weakly correlated with temperature. So what that means for the freeze out time is that you'd expect it to stay the same even when you reduce the temperature. And this is exactly what was shown in a paper published in Nature. So for systems of eight qubits, the freeze out time matched the quantum model and didn't match the classical model because it stayed the same at lower and lower temperatures. So this showed that at least groups of eight qubits were behaving quantum mechanically. So, so far these papers have shown that the behavior of the qubits in our quantum annealers can only be explained if they're following the rules of superposition and quantum tunneling. But they haven't yet probed that other vital phenomena in quantum physics, which is entanglement. So evidence for entanglement amongst eight qubits was shown in a 2014 paper published in PRX. And the technique used to show this is called qubit tunneling spectroscopy. So let me explain what this is. In tunneling spectroscopy, you split the qubits into two groups, the system qubits and the probe qubits. And you have a link between them. In our experiments, we used a single qubit as a probe. 
Then what you do is you anneal the probe qubit but keep the system qubits in the entangled state. And you can do this in such a way that the eigenspectrum of the system qubits are not changed by the probe qubits, but the probe qubit feels a bias from the system qubits. So what you can do with this is change the relative energy levels of the probe qubit and the system qubits and actually scan over the eigenspectrum of the system qubits and map it out. When I first learned about this technique, I thought it was really amazing <laughs> that you can actually probe the eigenspectrum of these system qubits. So what are the results? So in the eigenspectrum, what they saw was an anticrossing, which is a signature of entanglement. And this was seen in a system of eight qubits, which is evidence of eight qubit entanglement. Also, the theoretical quantum model was calculated to see if it matched up with the data. And there is a very strong agreement. So you can see this here, I've overlaid the quantum model over the top of the data. So bear in mind, these are not fitting lines. This is an independent theoretical calculation that's laid over the data. And it should be noted that there's no free parameters in the model. So the fit between theory and experiment is very good. And this is strong evidence of entanglement in this system. So there I've shown a bunch of different experiments on our quantum annealers that show that different aspects of quantum physics are controlling their evolution. Now I've had to be necessarily quite brief here, but I've linked to all the original papers in the show notes below. So if you want to find out more, you can dig deeper there.